In high magnification macro photography, imprecision comes with a price. And the higher the magnification, the higher the price. In this short video, I am going to tell you what backlash is. I'm going to tell you what backlash compensation is and what it does. Then I'm going to suggest that at certain uh, high magnifications, the backlash compensation can be a liability rather than a help, especially if you're working with an older rail uh, or if you have some imprecision in your system for any reason. And then I'm going to make a couple of suggestions about how you might want to work around this. One of them is just a modification of how you use the stack shot, but it'll allow you to continue to take advantage of the backlash compensation. The other will be a way for you to bypass it altogether. And uh, that is probably the, the more useful um, strategy for anybody who does a lot of high magnification stuff. Let's go back to the whiteboard and um, have a lecture because that's basically what this is. You thought you were getting a separate video, right? With visual effects and everything. It's a lecture at the whiteboard. Let's go. So to understand backlash compensation, you really need to understand what backlash is. If this is the shaft of a stepper motor that's connected to a lead screw that comes out this way and has a carriage sitting on it, this carriage, as the lead screw turns, will move forwards or backwards. Now, it doesn't do that immediately because there has to be some laxity built into the system to prevent it from seizing up. You can't have just metal on metal. There has to be little gaps to allow the metal to slide over itself. Because of that, this motor will initially, after it changes direction, and it has to change direction for this to, to matter, if this is the starting point, for some portion of a rotation, nothing will happen to the carriage as the motor turns. And then at some defined point, and this will, should be fixed or largely fixed for your uh, stack shot, this is called the backlash. So this is the amount that the motor shaft will turn before it engages with the carriage and starts to move it. Now, when you're making steps of 0.2 millimeters and the average uh, backlash in a stack shot system is about the same, 0.2 millimeters of backlash or 200 microns, then it doesn't really make much difference whether you get it right or not, because at the very worst, you're going to either miss a step or have an extra step. So in the perfect world, your backlash will be a number that you know, like 200 microns is, a, is commonly about what it is. I think it's 240 that they set the uh, stack shots up at, but I'm not sure. That's when it's brand new, before it's got dirt on it, before it's been used, before it's had a, you know, 10 years of use. It's uh, somewhere around 200 microns. That, that is actually not describing the amount of turn of the rotor. You would describe this in terms of degrees or radians, or you wouldn't describe it in millimeters uh, or microns, but this is translated into the movement of the table. In other words, the carriage would have moved 200 microns if there was no backlash. So this is the way your system is set up. And if it has 200 microns of backlash and it is set to compensate for 200 microns of backlash, you have no problem. It is, it is set up correctly. And all this means is when it changes direction, when the carriage goes from moving forward to moving backwards, that in this distance, you have to add 200 microns at the beginning so that it moves through the, the backlash to the beginning of the first step and then takes the first step. Okay, so if you set the steps at uh, 0.2 millimeters, it will actually, the motor will move the device 400 microns. 
but it won't move 400 because the first 200 is taken up on backlash. It'll take up the backlash with 200, then it will move 200, the first step. So that's the way Stackshot works. It has a bucket of backlash that it refills, a bucket of backlash compensation, that it refills every time it changes direction. So when the motor changes direction, it puts in a fresh 200 microns of backlash. And until it has moved in this new direction by that amount, nothing happens. The carriage doesn't move. So only when the backlash is taken up does the carriage move. Now, where you get into trouble is when you're not moving at 200 micron steps. You're moving at two micron steps or one micron step. Then if your backlash, let's say that your actual backlash is uh, 250 microns, but your backlash compensation is set at 150 microns. That means every time you change direction, the stack shot is going to add 150 microns to your first step. And let's say you're using one micron step. So your carriage, you let's say you were you were setting a, a start point or an end point or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're down here somewhere and you press start. The first thing the carriage does is return to the start point that you set. When it gets to the start point, the first step is going to be one micron plus the backlash. So it will be 151 microns. But it's only going to move one micron because your backlash is set at 150. Now, I told you that the actual backlash is 250. That means the motor has to move 250 microns before the thing starts to move. So 151 isn't going to cut it. This isn't going to happen. It's not going to move. In fact, it's going to sit there for 99 steps before on the 100th step, moving one micron. And then on the 101st step, it'll move another micron and so on. So what will happen is it will take a picture every time it thinks it's moved. So you're going to end up with 99 first out of focus shots before the first time that it moves. So how do we get around this? Uh, and hopefully you can see that the smaller your step length, the bigger the trouble you can get in. The problem I'm having is my actual backlash is fluctuating, meaning it, it's, it's different every time I measure it. And it depends on whereabouts on the rail the carriage is. When it's up here, the backlash is less. When it's up here, the backlash is more. Uh, I think there may be dirt in the carriage um, that where it runs on the rail. I think that the, uh, the lead screw may be getting worn in places. But for whatever reason, my uh, backlash is never constant, which means I can't have a constant compensation, which means I need a workaround for when I'm doing photography at this level, which is most of the time. So what I do is I overcome this by tricking the stack shot into thinking it's already done all the backlash for me. I turn off the backlash compensation. I set it to zero. The way you get to the backlash uh, settings is to hold the configuration button for a few seconds. Then this will come up. And what I do is I set my backlash compensation to zero. I'm telling Stackshot, I don't have any backlash, so you don't have to compensate for it, which means that when the stack shot changes direction at the end of a run, it doesn't give me 150 or 200 microns added to the rotation of the motor. It just immediately starts clicking around at the steps that I instructed it, one micron, which means every single step of my uh, backlash, it's not moving. It's just sitting there until it's it's gone through enough rotations to, to cover the 250 or whatever my backlash is that day. So there are two issues that we need to address. The first is 
what Stackshot thinks my compensation should be. And we address that by going into the configuration settings and putting my compensation at zero. So uh, Stackshot is going to think I have no backlash. That's fine. But it doesn't change the fact that I do have backlash. And I have quite a bit, probably around a quarter of a millimeter or thereabouts. I'm guessing some, most often it's around 240, 250, but it can be a lot more than that. So how do I get around this? Well, what I do is just, I start out the same way as, as you normally would. I take my, this is the, the stack shot rail. I move the carriage forward till I reach my start point. And I hit enter for the, for the start point. Then I move it towards my end point. And when I go beyond the last thing that I want in focus, I enter the end point. Now this is normally where you'd hit up or down and let the carriage go back to the start, add the backlash compensation, and then start clicking through the steps. But I have turned that off. So if I was to, to just hit start, the carriage would come back to the start. And then for about 250 microns, it would just take pictures at the start like this. And depending on how many steps I, I had entered, it may not even start moving. It may take pictures the whole time just at that spot. So that's obviously no good. So what I need to do is I need to get the carriage back to this point with no backlash. The way I do that is I continue going back quite a ways, actually, more than I need to, probably half a millimeter. Um, in, in reality, I go back about five millimeters, but that's just to be on the safe side. And then what I do is I turn it around to come in the other direction and using live view, I very carefully sneak up on my start point. This distance has to be greater than my actual backlash. So if I just take a stab and say my backlash is actually 300 microns, so long as this is more than a third of a millimeter, which it is because it's multiple millimeters, I'm safe because there is no backlash as long as I keep going in the same direction. It's only when you stop and change direction that the backlash bucket refills. What you cannot do is overshoot and then think you can just nudge it back a bit because however far you nudge it back, you have just turned the thing around and refilled the, the bucket of, of uh, backlash. And it's going to sit there until all the backlash is gone before it starts moving. So you can't do that. So you have to keep moving forward till you get to your start point. When you do, hit start. The rail may move just a tiny bit. So I try to be sure to stay on this side of it. If this is my, my start point here, I want to be somewhere close to it, but behind it. That way, the rail if the carriage moves to get back to the start point, it will move in this direction. If I go just a bit beyond, it will move back in this direction and it'll do what I said you shouldn't do and it will add laxity back into the system. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's go finish up. So we talked about backlash, we talked about backlash compensation and how anything that perturbs that system, anything that makes your uh, backlash variable. For example, I mentioned a couple of things that it could be on mine, and I have a lead screw here. When these lead screws get worn over a period of many years, they become even looser than they are with the tolerances that are built in, and the, the shaft will turn more before it catches the, the carriage, or in this case, the nut. And no matter how careful you are, your stack shot is eventually going to get a bit dirty. Stuff's going to get on the rails. The rails may oxidize a little bit. And things are going to add imprecision to your system. When the imprecision is measured in a few microns and your 
backlash compensation is 200 microns because your step length is 500 microns, then it doesn't really make any difference. You'll never notice it. But as we get higher and higher magnification, the tiniest little errors in the way the system is operating add up to huge mistakes. I said in the video that there were two solutions. There are probably three solutions. The, the first and the least attractive is to actually measure your backlash and then reset your backlash compensation to match exactly what you measure. The problem there is, unless you are an engineer equipped with all the, the, the tools and, and uh, devices you would need to do so, it's highly unlikely you're gonna get an accurate number. And it's highly unlikely that that number will remain unchanged as you use the rail. In other words, you're never gonna get that number. So you're never gonna get the compensation set accurately. Uh, your situation will probably be a lot like mine, that it'll vary over time. And when you're talking about one micron steps, any variance from that exact number will be extra or missed shots. You don't want that. The second way is the way I just showed you, is to reconfigure your workflow so that once a shooting sequence begins, you are moving in the same direction always, no backing up. If you do that, and if you add enough of a, a, a pre-run to, uh, to the shot that will take up any backlash that is in the system, from that point on, there is no backlash. It doesn't need to be compensated for, and you should get accurate uh, uh, photographs at the steps you uh, set. The third way, which I haven't mentioned at any point in any of this discussion, and I probably should have done at, at the beginning, is you can always shoot vertically. Because in the, in the vertical orientation, there isn't any backlash. Let me explain what I mean. If you have a lead screw that is horizontal, each groove in the lead screw would look like this in cross section, roughly. And the nut, the piece that, that engages with the, the turning screw to move, would sit in the groove. This is a gross oversimplification, but say that this was the case. Backlash is when the, the carriage is being pushed like this by this wall of the, of the V, and then you change direction. The carriage has to move back to re-engage the other side of the pin that's down in the groove before it will move. Do you see what I'm saying? It's actually not like that because the pin actually takes up almost all of the groove. So it's a very tiny, uh, very tiny amount of play. But this, this does show you what I'm talking about. So this moves it in that direction and then this moves it in this direction. But if you're shooting vertically, only the bottom face of the screw is ever gonna be in contact with the carriage. The carriage is always going to be pressed against the bottom screw because of gravity. So as you push the, the rail up, it is, it is lifting the, the carriage on the bottom face of the, the lead screw. Then as you change direction, gravity isn't suspended for the camera to just hang in space. There's nothing holding it here but the lead screw. So as you change direction to go back down, it's going to stay attached basically to the bottom face of the lead screw. No backlash. Hey everybody, this is me from uh, the future coming back to correct a mistake that I made just then, what I just finished saying. The vertical orientation of your stack shot does not eliminate backlash. I said that and it was wrong. Uh, what I should have said was the rail that I was using and multiple other rails when you turn them vertical will do that. They will eliminate the backlash. But because the stack shot uses bushings uh, to at, on the guide rails to keep the thing straight that have a great deal of internal resistance, they won't. If you actually disconnected the ball screw 
and just had the camera sitting on these bearings and you turned it upright, it wouldn't, it wouldn't budge. It would stay there till you pushed it. Apparently, it takes several pounds of pressure to advance uh, a stack shot rail even without anything holding it. Some of the rails that are available on the market today use linear bearings that are almost frictionless. And these things will not support the weight of your camera. They won't support the weight of a feather before they slide. Uh, and that was my mistake. I was making the assumption that the uh, stack shot had linear type bearings um, instead of bushings in there. And I didn't know that. So I learned something new. Who did I learn it from? Rick Littlefield. Thank you, Rick. I really appreciate it. So in summary, I think that there are two very reasonable ways to overcome issues of backlash at high magnification. One, if you want to shoot horizontally, is learn how to use up the backlash in your workflow before you even press the start button. Easy to do, works every time. Second option, shoot vertical. Turn off the backlash compensation and shoot vertical and you will be accurate. Pick a solution, stick with it. If you're going high magnification, you need to learn one of these workarounds. Thanks for watching. I will see you again soon in one video or another. Take care.